Today, I just want to show you the seven Obsidian plugins that I use on a regular basis. So it's going to be quite quick because most of them, the way I use them is quite simple, but some of them, they're a bit more complex and there's actually a lot more to it than what I'm going to show you now. But the point of this video is just to show you what they're about so that afterwards you can dive deeper if um, you think they're for you. So here we go. These are the seven Obsidian plugins that I use on a regular basis. The first one is called ProZen and what it does is basically this, as you can see in the screenshot. It makes your content of a node completely full screen by removing all those UI elements. And how I set it up is here you have the hotkeys. And for me, I added my hotkey control Z so that whenever I hit control Z, it goes into full screen. And I really love it because I can see um, the content of my note and only this. I don't have other distractions, like all these little icons and everything. I don't have this. So I can really focus on my notes completely. The second one I use quite often is Excalidraw. If you're already using Obsidian, and plugins, you probably know about it because it's one of the most downloaded ones, if not the most popular one, I don't really remember. But what this one does really well is that it makes it super easy to make simple drawings and diagrams. So once you install it, you have this little icon here, you just click and you have this nav bar on the top. And basically what you click on is what you get. So it's super intuitive. It's not like those other apps like Figma where you can end up um, on YouTube because you cannot do simple things with the UI. But here, everything is real simple. Um, I use it often for diagrams. So I can do, I start like this and then I go with this one like here and then I just add and like you can zoom in, zoom out. It's really, really uh, well done and really simple. You can also go get creative and make some drawings, um, but this part I don't really do. Anyways, um, that's it for Excalidra. Recently, they also added AI features. I'm not sure what these do, but um, you should explore it if you're interested in it, because I'm sure there's some interesting stuff in there. The third plugin that I use very often, this one I probably use daily, is File Organizer 2000. And full disclaimer, this one uh, is the plugin that I built with uh, my brother Ben. So I use it for myself, but I use, also use it a lot for development purposes. So let me show you a few things that I do with it. So here, for example, I have a note about uh, an airplane of World War II. And if I go here in this nav bar that I can open um, by clicking this little icon here, I see all those AI suggestions here. And the first one I have here under AI templates um, is asking me if I want to format this file as an aircraft profile. What's happening here is basically that in the file when has a 2000 plugin, um, when you install it, what happens is that you have this folder added here. And in here, you have a templates folder which um, in which you can create any prompt you want so that you can easily reuse afterwards. So here I created one called aircraft profile and I'm asking a bunch of things basically to generate a bunch of properties and also adding um, a summary at the bottom with some strengths and weaknesses of that plane. So see, now if I go back on this file, I wait a little bit and here I can apply this um, template. So you can see here on the left, I also have meeting notes, uh, which is here, but you can have as many as you want. And the AI usually detects which one is most appropriate. So if I apply it, you can see that it populated all those properties uh, generated by ChatGPT. And then if we scroll down, it also added the other thing I asked, which is, oh yeah, I also assist battles. It was used in the strengths and weaknesses. Okay, 
So what I can also do in here is I can add tags. See, it was added here. And this particular file also doesn't have a title. So I can also choose from one of those. I'm gonna choose this one. Here we go. And then finally send it to the correct folder. So this folder here is one that I have. And these two is one that I don't have yet. So it could suggest new folders as well. So here, I'm just gonna send it here and that's it. But if you wouldn't want to click on all of those options, you could simply use what we call the inbox. So again, under this folder, we have um, the inbox and see here, I have this unorganized file note as they call it in Obsidian. And now if I slide it into the inbox, it takes a couple of seconds and then it's processed. And hopefully if it went correctly, yes, it was sent to the correct folder. So basically, yes, this inbox is everything that you see here on the right, but um, which you can automate. So all of this can be automated um, if you send your file to the inbox. And of course, um, you can customize how everything works in the settings. And then of course, we also have the chat, which is probably the one I use the most. And recently we added the um, search functionality, the web search functionality. So for example, I can even ask how many acres have burned in California in the past 24 hours. And here's all the info. And the best thing is that if you check below, you have all those articles from the web. So that's where he took the information from. And I can easily just do a, a press um, review. Oh, I don't know how, how it's called literature review. When uh, I was studying, that's how um, pretty much they would call it. Uh, but here I can click and see, for example, here I have an article from the 14th of January. Then what you can also do in the chat is, of course, um, our first functionality was to be able to tag tags, folders, and notes. So for example, I can tag like this, this note, and I have all the context from this file here in my notes. So I can ask, uh, what is the top speed of this plane? and it should pull the information from here. So yes, that's correct. So that's the basic use of uh, this chat. But of course you can ask whatever you want to it, just like ChatGPT. The fourth one is a really simple one and I use it only for my to-do list and checklist, but there's other commands here. So let me show you how I use it. So whenever I create a to-do list, I have like task one, task two, task three. And without this plugin, as far as I know, if I wanted to create a checkbox, I would have to type it like this. But with that hotkeys plugin, I can just select these three and then press on command M and boom, here are my checklists. And that's all it does for me. <laughs> There's a couple of other commands that you can also perform with it but that's what I use it for. The fifth plugin I use is called Tasks, and this one allows you to create and modify tasks with a UI and have a number of tools to better manage tasks. So let me show you what it looks like. So let's go in the um, command palette, and if I type in task, I can here create or edit a task, and then I write whatever I want. I can set the priority, this one I'm gonna put high. I'm gonna um, add a date, a due date. So let's say tomorrow. And start today. And then you have more options, but I'll just apply. 
So here I have the priority, I, will, I have the date when I started, when it's due, and when I finish it, I have the date I actually finished it. So you can also add those properties when you add a task like this, it nicely pops up. I always use the priority, the priority ones, the due date, start date, not always. But these always, so that after, after, I can easily decide which task to prioritize. So that's also a really useful plugin. Number six is called Tracker. And I really like this one because it's very visual. If you're into data visualization and like to track your data, this one is a must have. You can track anything you want. You can track your weight. You can track like how many days in a row you meditate, for example, as they show in this example, your blood pressure, basically any data that you have and that you document into your Obsidian. For a while, I was documenting my calorie intake and um, I experimented a little bit and created this type of graph. So here you can see every day my calorie intake that I had on week three of 2024. And how this works is by adding just a little bit of code like this, uh, but that's super easy to find out what to do in the documentation. But here, as you can see, it takes uh, my info from this folder, personal intake food calorie week 32. And from here is going to take my calories and I just chose green as a color. So here see I created those files here where I have um, I just wrote the number of calories that um, I'm taking on um, intaking or my calorie intake on each day and then it just um, creates this graph. Let me just add another one to really show you how it works. I can just, for example, duplicate this file. Here I have, I just have to change the date. Here, let's put 10,000, let's go crazy. And if I go back into my tracker, you can see that my calorie intake went up big time. So yeah, I really love this one because I love visual data. And finally, the seventh plugin that I use is called Hot Reload. This one is a bit of a bonus because most of you will not have a use for it. This one is only useful if you develop plugins for Obsidian. And what it does is this. So if I wanna ch make any changes in my plugin that I'm working on, um, it's gonna reload automatically so that I don't, I don't need to go into Option, Command, I, Reload. I don't need to do this because if I go into my code, let's say I'm looking for this code, Format Behavior. Here, I can simply modify it like this, save, and then it's going to reload. I don't need to do it manually. So see, here the changes are, are there and that's it. There you go, guys. These are the plugins that I currently use in Obsidian. Let me know if there's any of those plugins that you'd like to see a more in-depth video for. Also, let me know which plugins you use. And that's about it. Thanks for watching and until next time.